Uh, I suppose you probably shouldn't run in the shop unless you want to take a perma nap. Welcome to the airplane part. Four. Four, thanks Sam. This is what we got done the last few weeks. Okay, okay, okay. Before we go any further, apparently according to this graph, or this graph, you guys aren't watching these montages and the other professional YouTubers that I know say my montages suck and people fast forward to them and they are the source of me losing ad revenue because you guys are fast forwarding. Therefore, YouTube is not recommending my content. We're gonna try something new. I'm actually gonna narrate you guys through what we're doing. <laughs> So I had my friend Travis come out. He actually showed me how to TIG weld, gave me some tips and tricks, and then I proceeded to weld this thing over the next week or two. It was actually an ordeal. All right, here we are picking out the poplar for the wing spars. That was actually an ordeal within itself. Finding straight poplar is uh, kind of tricky, actually. This stuff is not very great. So here we are with gluing it on, doing that. All right, sand more of the stuff. Oh yeah, this is the uh, shear web. All right, are we lasering stuff? Okay, yeah, we're lasering stuff. So we're making the templates for hot wiring, which you'll see in a second. All right, do more sanding, sanding. Yeah, okay, are we secret recipe of uh, RV sauce? Yeah, it's actually epoxy. Okay, here we are epoxying this, the skin in. I'm doing this in high speed. My dog's moving in slow speed in the background, as you can probably notice. Here we are doing more sanding for the thing. All right, you can actually cut aluminum. Oh, we're doing something else. All right, here's some more shavings, drilling holes, match hole drilling for this B spar plate. I laser cut the template out. That's actually really good use for it. Here we are trying to make it as light as possible. <laughs> That's very funny. It probably didn't do anything. All right, here we are doing the acid etching process. This stuff stinks. I took it outside and did it after this. Alodining with the brush because it said I could do that. It didn't work. So here we are dipping in the alodine solution bath because that probably would work better. It actually didn't work very well at all. This is the best piece that came out of the whole ordeal. But I don't really need to worry about that. I'll talk about that later. Oh yeah, here we are doing more stuff, putting the blocks in for the uh, hard points for the wing. This is for the cable struts. Here we are drilling. Oh, we're doing something else. Okay, cutting some more metal. Um, pro tip, use some cutting fluid. It makes cutting much better. Okay, we're done with this pieces. Put them on the wing. All right, match drilling. You drill one side, and then you go and drill the other side. Oh, yep, definitely still drilling. Yep, check to make sure those bolts fit. Don't want to fall out of the sky and die. Oh, blow the shavings all over the place so I die of dust cancer. Take the clamps off, slip this on. Okay, yeah, this is the actual plate that does that. Yeah, yeah, go and hit that with your fists. Uh, uh, okay, we're now, apparently we're painting now. Thanks, Dave, uh, we've moved on to this. Uh, yeah, do some primering, then put some gloss black rust-oleum on there. This stuff actually doesn't hold up very well. It scratches easily. Okay, more stuff, uh, foam. Yeah, here we are cutting the templates out. Let me know if you guys wanna see on how to make it, this tool. I'm thinking about starting a secondary channel, but yeah, there's all those ribs. Oh yeah, here we are tamp taping where the Skin is going to touch the wing. So tape off the glue joints and rub that varnish on there. Oh yeah, don't forget to rub on the inside of the actual wing where I can't touch it. Mix some more epoxy up, put that all over the ribs. Pretty in-depth process. And this is actually kind of scary uh, thinking about it because I would never try anything like this in my life, even building models. I never skinned anything. So this is totally scary. I actually put this thing under the sink, got it wet. Here it is just wet, kind of soaking wet. You can't really see it because it kind of absorbed the water. I probably should have actually steamed it. Oh yeah, staple it on there. Yeah, yeah, more stapling. Oh yeah, time for the straps. Because I had to strap it and then let it dry overnight so it would kind of hold its shape. So yeah, check out that gap closure. There it is, it's all done. All right, that looks pretty cool. And it was a stress reliever for me because I was not sure I was gonna do that. Oh yeah, time for the rest of the ribs. Just go ahead and uh, stick them in there. I'm wearing socks with sandals as you can clearly see. Oh, some zinc chromate primer. I had to put this on there for the Ortex to stick to because it doesn't stick to raw aluminum, or at least it does in the beginning, but then it probably lets go, according to people who told me how to do this. Here we are drilling the holes for the pop rivets. Oh, uh, that's spinning round and round. Okay, stick the pop rivet in there. That's the Cherry Max rivet. Those are really expensive and very hard to get off. I actually had to cut one off, and they are an ordeal to get off, but hey, they're they're aviation rated, so that's why. All right, stick this in there. Oh, more. Oh, uh, we're putting cat strips in. Okay. And that's how you build the wing. I think it cuts into something here, right? Oh, there I am. All right, so plane is done, or at least the wings are done, and it's time to actually do the strength test right now. So we're basically simulating G-loading as, as positive loading right now. Basically, if I were to pull a loop or run turbulence in the air, the plane's going to be under a lot of stress. At a 1G level flight, it's going to probably be having an alt weight with me in it about of 330 pounds. So we need to load up to 330 pounds, and that'll be 1G. The goal is to get it up to about 3G, Sam? What do you think? 3G sounds like enough. 3G sounds like a pretty normal utility load. All what do you do? Okay, whatever, put it on. 
Right now we'll be at 1G and some change. Okay, well, that's the level of flight, ladies and gentlemen. It didn't break yet. It did not, not even any creaking or cracking, so that's good. Let's keep going. That's it, that's that's three Gs. I don't, that's I don't, a lot. I'm pretty sure we're, we're good from a lot more, but not without some serious repercussions because I'm starting to get a little bit of deflection here on this. It should return to shape after I pull this out, but if it doesn't return to shape, I might be hosed. We should take one side off and leave the other. That sounds like a horrible idea. Okay, you can see the fuselage there. It, it's starting to bow just a little bit from the weight. I think this is a 5 base uh, 035 wall. It's bended a little, but it should probably not remain there once you take the weight off. It's bending a lot. What, do you think it's bending a lot? It looks fine to More me. More than I thought. All right, let's take the weight off. I'm a wing walker. So we got done with the stress test. That was actually a little bit, um, I'm gonna get off of this. I feel like I'm gonna fall through the skin, although I know the, uh, the spar itself is definitely strong enough. All right, we'll get down. Too late, you missed it. This is how people would normally do the repair motor things on the fuel tank. They have a breather valve and they just blow into the breather valve, which blows air into this thing and creates higher pressure in here. Naturally, the atmosphere is lower pressure, so you press this little primer aspirator thing. I forget what it does. Anyways, it lets me blow fuel inside here, so it's now primed. We completed the wing stress test. We also installed the engine and actually just broke it in. Did it with the wing on, too, because I wanted to make sure the wing would not come apart from all the vibratingness, because that thing shakes a lot. Like, surprisingly, it shakes a lot. And now, luckily, one of my Instagram followers, hey, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, you should definitely follow me on Instagram because I post crap on Instagram. I also post crap on Twitter, I think. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with my Twitter, though. So we did that. It runs. Nothing fell off the wing. And actually, I'm kind of really impressed how much vibration make, makes nuts fall off because all of the normal nuts in here that don't have stop nuts or any sort of Loctite or locking mechanism, they all vibrated and fell off <laughs> right when I was running this in. So anyways, the wings have not been covered yet, mainly because I re really wanted to do the engine test to make sure nothing was gonna vibrate off of these and make sure the fit and finish feels good and move it around because I've been banging this thing around and I don't wanna damage the covering. And the covering for this airplane is actually gonna be Oratex. Now, the guy who distributes Oratex in the US, betteraircraftfabric.com, he actually invited me out to Valdez in Alaska to check out the flying and check out some Oratex airplanes. That was actually really cool and I've never been to Alaska, so I didn't even know what to expect. Okay, so we're back from Alaska. Yeah, that was totally fun. I will be covering this very shortly in part five. Actually, part five will just be me flying it. I'm just gonna breeze over the covering. We did the two-stroke break-in. Nothing catastrophic happened there. I gotta put a leash on the airbox because uh, thanks to Tucker got another awesome YouTube channel you should check out. He, he had his airbox come off and go to this prop and someone else mentioned that in my comment section too because uh, maybe it's a known issue with these Viterazzi things. It's getting very close to flight time. And so far it's passed everything I've put it through. Nothing has catastrophically happened so far. The wings look okay. They've taken the stress. What do you think, Sam? Or it looks good. Sure you're ruining my outro. 